If you have fears, that those fears will seem to manifest, not in reality, not in heaven, but just in perception, just to bring you more closer in touch with what your thoughts are and your beliefs. This is a good thing. This is a, everything's working together for the good. If you've got an unconscious fear and a desperation that, that you're not acknowledging, wouldn't you want it to be acknowledged? Wouldn't you want it to be brought up into awareness? Would you rather be run by having your mind controlled by this unconscious belief system that you're not even aware of? Or would you rather be fully aware so you make every decision consciously for the whole, for the whole universe? You can't make a decisions for the whole universe if you partly are listening to Holy Spirit and partly letting the ego run the ship, you know, from this unconscious guilt. So, let me give you a hint. If this happens in your relationship, with your partner, with your child, with your pet, with your teacher, maybe your pet gives you that look like, what happened to you? That you aren't the same pet owner that I, I met when we first came together. What, you, when did you get into all this guilt? What's going on? Or it could be with a partner. Let's say you're practicing using our tools, expression sessions, retreats, no private thoughts, and so on and so forth. When this happens, the best thing to do is expose it. Now, the best thing you could do now, in this point of devastation, right. is join now, immediately. Expose it, go for an expression session, because what you want to do is you want to, you want to keep nothing hidden. That's the whole point of spiritual awakening. There are no private thoughts, nothing is kept hidden. And to the ego, this just seems like, I got you again. Like, now I got you. Now you're devastated, and now you better go back to the old way of hiding and protecting. You know, private thoughts, private minds, and you know, two ships passing in the night, no communication. So this is a good teaching device. The, you, you have to come into that state of mind with this world to say, we don't, I don't know anything for sure about this world. But I'm going to follow my heart, I'm going to follow my joy, I'm going to follow the connections, I'm going to follow the guidance and the prompts and the intuitions, and I'm going to follow that, and then I'm going to let the world do whatever the world does, because in the end, it still comes down to, you have to let go of the belief that there's something outside of your mind. The teachings of the Course is basically saying, no, the ego belief is the only thing that's holding you back. You have no external enemies. The ego has projected these characters, these shadow figures in the world, to try to scare your mind into believing that it can't escape. But those shadow figures aren't the problem, they're just projections of the ego. And as long as you believe there's an external world that's holding you back, it maybe it's your aunt, or your uncle, or your relative, or your best friend. Well, I can't do this because my best friend wouldn't like me anymore. And and, and then you have this thought, like, oh, I have a concern about what other people think. There it is again, what other people think. There aren't any other people. There aren't any other people with private minds and private thoughts. It's all coming down to our one mind, and really staying vigilant with the Holy Spirit, and saying, no, I'm going to follow your instructions and your joy all the way. I'm going for the escape. I am not going to believe these doubt thoughts. Even if I think there are other people, even if I think other people will leave me, if I follow the truth, others may say, that's not for me, I'm out of here, uh, we've been friends for so long, but I can't stand you talking about oneness, God anymore, I can't hear it anymore, I'm just not in a place to receive it, I have to say goodbye. We have to allow all that. We have to be able to face that fear. We cannot give in to the fear in our mind, because that is the ego. The exposing is so essential to the releasing. Because if you don't expose, if you fear to expose, it must believe that you believe something terribly has gone wrong. You must, you must believe that you're unworthy of love. You must believe that you're not going to get this right, or you know, you're, you're just uh, going to mess things up, and on and on. The ego just goes rampant with its, its a uh, sense of, you're not worthy of love, and you're just getting what you deserve, you blew it, you broke the agreement, and so on and so forth. You know, 
when there's a broken agreement and something's not shared openly, there's a pressure in the mind. And then, uh, I love, I think it's the Rumi quote, even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, come, come again. There's the spirit coming through saying, no, no, all is not lost. The, the spirit is going to handle this, no matter how devastating it is, no matter how much you've allowed the fear to run something in your life, all is not lost because in the end, nothing can prevail against the will of God. Nothing can prevail against the will of God. You cannot mess it up. I'll say it again, you cannot mess it up. The spirit of love is orchestrating everything behind the scenes for this exposure and release of this error. And the spirit loves us so much that really, in the end you will see there are no mistakes. In the end you will see that you just were mistaken for a moment about identity and then all this time stuff played out. But it wasn't real. It didn't really harm you. It didn't touch who you really are. Who God created you to be is who you are. And there's nothing of this world, there's nothing of time and space that can prevail against God's will. So hold on to your hats. Because Kansas is going bye-bye.